Hey guys, we're back. It's been a long time since we posted. In the background, we have a few of the things that we're now working on, and we're gonna go into detail of what we're doing and uh, the reasons we're picking which motors that we're working on come 2023, 2024. Uh, so we'll get right into This right here is something we've uh, spend a little more than two and a half years researching this. This is a Toyota 1GZ FE uh, 5 liter V12. Um, essentially came in the Toyota Century, only available in Japan uh, through the 90s and up until 2016. The motors are very, very reliable. Dual overhead cam. Um, Essentially, two Toyota basically used two computers. You can see them right there, and uh, segregated these motors into two different engines, and they share a crank. Essentially, it's a 60 degree V8. Uh, like I said, dual overhead cam this makes about low to mid threes. I think horsepower torque is is uh, pretty strong though on these, uh, or maybe 300 torque and then uh, 300 horsepower and and a little bit more torque. But regardless, good reliable engine works really well for what it is. However, these engines have went up in price significantly in the past year and a half since COVID, post COVID. I don't know when you're gonna watch this or who's watching this or whatever, but basically uh, the price of Toyota V12s have skyrocketed. We picked this one up, I think for 2,800. And I thought that was a ridiculously high price. The other one I picked up, I picked up for uh, 2200 We got another one. This is a 1997 motor. The other one I have is a 2004 1GZ FE. So what all this translates into is we want to find the best bang for your buck, the best sound that we can get out of an engine uh, going forward. We want to concentrate on these V12s before we can't get them anymore. And what I'm getting at is this this Toyota V12 is almost unobtainable. It's it's uh, creeping up to the $5,000 mark, which is crazy for a Toyota engine that uh you know doesn't make more than 400 horsepower. So, with that said, companies like Hartley and a few other companies make some supporting parts for it, but we're not going to get into the hardcore like piston and rod type scenario. We're just going to uh, you know create the supplemental parts, headers, engine mounts adapter plates, flywheels, uh, stuff to make these things cool, almost in stock form. Um, people are running like Haltech Nexus 5s and Max ECU, stuff like that. There's a, a bunch of different ways you can tackle the engine management system on these engines. But to transition, we are essentially gonna, we're essentially gonna move forward and start focusing on these. So right now we're dotting this up. This is a Mercedes M120 six liter V12. And this is out of an S600 that we have right here. This is a 1998 Mercedes Benz W140 chassis. And the reason we went with this car is a multitude of reasons. I actually had a, a CL600, a 5.8 liter 2002 um, vehicle. I still have it, it's, it's over here, but uh, it's not in the shot today. But the reason we went with this six liter V12 is it produces a lot of power for the late 90s. It's an over square engine. It's dual overhead cam and they just sound amazing. Pagani used these in the Zonda in the early 2000s. I can't remember the exact time frame, but they were used in uh, some hypercars. Uh, they're really reliable. Um, I haven't had any issues with this specific car. We, I picked this up for really cheap. You can still buy these uh, used in pretty good shape, um, but uh, they're really reliable. Uh, they're not necessarily a small engine. It's pretty large, uh, but they're really robust and they're 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 um, you know almost uh, indestructible in stock form. So we went ahead and we picked up a few of these. Uh, we got. Uh, quite a few of these. We have uh, five right now. I think we got another two over here. So we saw this as an opportunity to pick up an affordable V12 that makes power um, something that is essentially uh, really robust in stock format. We don't plan on turboing, turbocharging or supercharging any of these engines. We just essentially 
are going to keep them relatively stock, make a uh, manual swap kit for it, and uh, you know some some really really nice equal length headers, and make this a, essentially a, a really nice sounding project that we can put into um, many different vehicles. The reason you want to go with an M120 over a 1GZ is this price. Number two, very important, um, oil pan setup. How the oil pan uh, is set up uh, means you can put it into different vehicles without having to go dry sump or go into a custom oil pan, kind of like our K-series system where you have these different oil pans and whatnot. Speaking of which, coming right off the CNC machine, we actually do machine our, our parts in-house. It's getting ready to go on tomorrow. Uh, but oil pan is very important. What um, defines what vehicle it can kind of sit in without having to do that many uh, modifications is whether or not a mid-sump, like this engine right here, this is out of a W140, or one that's out of an R129. So 40 would be four-door S600, 1998. I think it's like 19, early 90s through 2000 is the last year that this car was made. This is a mid-sump engine uh, in this vehicle. And the two-door R129 is a front-sump engine. What that means is you can put it in a bunch of different vehicles. So essentially uh, a big advantage of the M120 can make a bunch of different swap kit parts, a bunch of different transmission options, header options, et cetera, so forth. Uh, engine mount options, the engine mounts are this, in the same location with both front sump and rear sump, the block doesn't change. But the oil pump uh, pickup tube and the mid pan and the lower pan do change. And so that affords us a lot of benefits to go with uh, this engine and, and put a lot of years and time and machine work and all sorts of stuff into this as opposed to going to this. We've already done a few things with this. We made an adapter plate and a few other things. And um, we're still going to support the, the 1GZ FE, but we're not going to support it as much as we're going to go into the M120. The M120 shows a little bit more promise. It makes a little bit more power um, you know, per liter than the 1GZ. Um, it just sounds amazing. Over square engines sound absolutely phenomenal. What over square means is the uh, bore is essentially larger than the stroke. So this will have a longer stroke than the bore. And uh, this, this just like a Ferrari, or I'm sorry, a Lamborghini. A Lamborghini is a, a, a great example of an over square engine. So is an F1 car. An F1 car has a tiny stroke, you know, like a one inch stroke or maybe a little over an inch, but the bore is like a three and a half or four inches and it just revs to like 12,000, 13, 14,000 RPM. So it sounds crazy. They just, I don't know, driving an internal combustion engine that revs high sounds really cool. That's kind of what we're going at. This is becoming uh, too expensive. We're going to focus on M120. There's another motor. Um, these are really heavy. These are like 640 kilograms. And the model that um, is just after the M137 is a 5.8 liter uh, V12 that essentially is, I think, 80 kilograms less than the M120, um, which makes it just about the same weight as like an LS, a fully loaded LS. But they don't make as much power and they don't sound as cool and they're not as reliable. Um, and it's it's really tough to kind of uh, get those things to kind of uh, run correctly and stuff like that, which is why uh, the CL600 that I got uh, just had a bunch of different module issues. And it was really difficult to kind of get that going where we needed it to after um, almost a year of messing with it. We're, we're just going to stick to this. This is a late night, early late 90s uh, technology, and it works really well. So let me just uh, highlight a few more things about what we're doing and um, kind of give you guys a rundown of um, five liter V12. Great, really reliable, really tall. The intake kind of folds over on itself. Um, there's a lot of cool things that Toyota developed with this that are cool, but 
Uh, all in all, it's easier to get more power out of this. This is a little bigger, just slightly, but they sound really good and uh, they make great power right out of the box. You really don't need to do much. You don't have to switch the intake. You don't have to run ITBs. You don't have to run dry sump. Um, highly recommend changing the exhaust. The exhaust is just really tiny on this thing. Same thing with the 1GZ. The GZ just whittles down to this tiny little two inch tube right here for that whole right bank of uh, cylinders. Um, but just like typical Toyota fashion, they have everything uh, completely redundant. And, um, you know, two igniters, um, two computers, two crank angle sensors. Uh, it's basically two engines, like I said before, kind of just sharing a crank in a 60 degree format. Um, this is also a 60 degree engine, uh, kind of designed the same way, two engine or two computers, two crank angle sensors you can see right there. Um, you know, uh, this one's a little different. It's, it's coil on plug. Um, and I don't think it's sequential, sequentially injected, but, um, they do have, uh, like I said, different versions of the oil pump. We're going to come over here and look at this, uh, oil, oil pump and pickup configuration here. We're going to go ahead and flip this around. I'm going to show you, um, why, uh, this is essentially the way to do it. It seems as if this is drive by wire, right? This is going into a, you know, harness that's kind of, uh, into, uh, the throttle bodies and they both have that same system. However, if you look over here little tangent The throttle cable is connected to this little I don't know servo or, or uh, Potentiometer and then this controls the drive-by wire nature of This 98 motor so we can even adapt these into cars With a throttle cable. I thought that was really cool over here Dan went ahead to flip this thing over we're going to look at the sump. This is again, an S 600 W 140 V 12, six liter V 12 in here. We have a mid sump engine, mid sump configuration. And if you look in here, you can kind of see that the pickup unbolts from the front oil pump area, just similar to how Toyota does most of their engines, like the Jay Z engine, one UZ stuff like that. But on the one GZ, this thing, this is one of the reasons this, this motor sucks is because the uh, pickup and the oil pump and everything is stuck inside the lower oil pan. When you remove that, you'll see everything kind of uh, clogging up that area. It really, it really prevents you from, it prevents you from swapping it into a bunch of different engines. The one, one GZ is strictly front sump. To get it into mid sump configuration, which is what you would need for Supra, FDRX7, SC300, basically anything cool that is two door, like a sports car, is gonna be mid sump. LS430. LS430. <laughs> uh, definitely gonna do that. This is the ticket. If you have a mid sump car, a mid sump subframe configuration, you wanna go with an M120 for that reason only. It just simplifies the oil pan, oil pump pickup issue. You don't have to spend 2,500, three grand on a custom dry sump. If you wanna daily drive something like this, I know that that sounds crazy, but um, daily driving a V12 in you know, a luxury car, um, honestly, I think that's the move in my opinion. And that's kind of where we're going. We're just trying to get uh, these V12s into a few cars before we can't buy V12s anymore. You know, uh, Internal combustion engines, are probably gonna be extinct in the next seven to 10 years. It's really sad to say that. So um, that's why we're gonna focus on big V12s, cheap big V12s while we can and uh, uh, try to put them in as many vehicles as we can. So uh, that's pretty much all we got today. Um, and we're gonna keep you guys updated. We made a, a few, um, Made some progress with some K-series stuff recently. We haven't really released that on the website. By the way, we came up with a new website. Forgot to tell you guys that. Um, go check it out, collinsadapters.com, uh, and stay tuned on our YouTube channel. I'm sorry, on our Instagram, which is uh, at Collins Garage. And don't forget to subscribe for some more uh, updates, parts of the like. Thank you guys, and let me know in the comments below which one you think is better, M120 or the 1GZ.